Hey everyone, so just before this video starts, I do want to say that I've just released my first Godot project called Mushi's Kitchen Cheese Rampage. So it's a pretty simple game where you play as Mushi and you've got to collect all the cheese to help him make the biggest cheesecake ever made. And uh, by the way, it is a horror game underneath, uh, so if you want to check it out, be sure to. I consider it my Halloween special for this year, so yeah, it is free and you can download it on Itch.io right now. Also, I've recently released a demo for my latest game, which will be coming out at some point, called ULEM Shadow Memories, which you can also wishlist on Steam as well. Anyways, that's it for, uh, you know, promoting my games and stuff. Now let's get on with the tutorial. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Linux here, and welcome back to a brand new video here on the channel. So this video is actually my first ever Godot tutorial, so I'm specifically using Godot 4. Uh, so if you want to know what Godot version I'm using, I'm using Godot 4 for this tutorial. And uh, I thought for uh, my first ever Godot tutorial, I'd start off with something easy, and I'd show you guys how to make an audio volume slider for your Godot game. So let's say, for example, you want to change your master volume of your game to change all the sound volumes if you think it's a bit loud or a bit quiet or whatever. Well, yeah, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to actually do that, how to actually make a slider for that, and uh, yeah. So here I am in a brand new Godot project. So as you can see here in the uh, like a file system thingy over here, I've got like a, a music, a bit of music here. So basically what this is, is it's just a song from one of my games and I'm going to be importing this into the uh, into one of the scenes uh, for this tutorial so then we can have some like sound going on so then as we're changing the audio volume slider you can actually hear the music getting quieter or louder based on uh, the volume we're changing so it's basically just going to be here as an example and so what we're going to do now is uh, when you create a new project or if you're already in a new project you might want to create a new scene if you haven't created like a user interface scene yet like a scene for your uh, UI so what you want to do is you want to press user interface on a new scene and uh, yeah so it should open up a new scene here and then what you want to do is you want to right click on the control and you want to go add child node alright so now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be searching up slider because we want to use a slider for this so you can use either a vertical slider or a horizontal slider I'm going to be using a horizontal slider which is just called H slider and uh, by the way um, when you're like choosing any of these like uh, nodes here uh, there's actually a description for it so you can see what it is so as you can see here for the H slider it says a horizontal slider that goes from left to right and then a vertical slider that goes from bottom to top so we're going to be using the horizontal slider for this tutorial and uh, yeah so once you get your horizontal slider it should appear over here and you might just want to like you know stretch it out and uh, position it wherever you want to so since this is just a tutorial where I'm going to be showing you guys how to do the audio volume slider I'm not going to really care too much about how neatly I place this I'm just going to place it a random you know part in the screen so just over here in the top right and uh, yeah, so once you place your slider, you'll notice over here to the right, you'll have all these uh, like variables and stuff like that. So you'll have your min value and your max value. And so what we're going to be setting for the min value of the slider is negative 80, since I'm pretty sure that is like the, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that is like the lowest the volume can actually go uh, in Godot, it might be able to go lower, um, I think it's negative 80, but um, yeah, and then with the max value, you can set this to uh, however high the, uh, you know, max audio in Godot is, it might be something like 80 or more, I'm not too sure, um, but yeah, uh, I think for my recent game, Mushi's Kitchen Cheese Rampage, I set this to 6, so then, uh, because basically, right, uh, what zero is, if you have your max value set to zero, that will basically be like um, the normal volume. So that will basically be like your normal max volume, but anything over zero will be basically making your audio louder than what it actually normally is. So if you want to do that and you want to have, uh, you know, even louder audio than what you would usually have for your max, then you can do that as well. So I might just set the max value to uh, 12 for the purpose of this video. Uh, again, you can set this to whatever you want to. I mean, you can set these uh, min or max values to whatever you want to really. 
but uh, yeah that's just like a sort of what I'm doing for this tutorial and so what you want to do as well is um, make sure you save often as well so press control less and then you'll notice that uh, this window pops up to uh, save a scene so what I recommend you do is you create a folder and you create a folder called scenes go OK and then you want to name your scene so I'm just going to call this uh, UI so it'll be called UI.TSCN and we're going to save that and then boom so now we've got our uh, UI scene in the scenes folder alrighty so now that we have all that done let's actually get to the scripting for this audio slider so what you want to do is with your audio slider selected um, and also, by the way, with all these like other variables here, there's nothing really else that you need to, uh, uh, you know, change here. Uh, you can just leave all this if you want to. You can play around with all these settings if you want to, but the only settings you really need to worry about are the min value and max value. You also have this one here called editable, which basically uh, determines if you can interact with the slider or not. So if you want to play around with that, you can. But yeah. So uh, anyways, down here at the bottom, you want to click uh, where it says script and empty. And then you want to go new script. So now we're going to be creating a new script. Now you'll have all these, uh, you know, options here. You don't need to worry about any of this. Uh, what we will be worrying about though is the path section. So we're going to be calling this volume underscore slider dot gd. Now dot gd refers to the script file name since uh, we're going to be using gd script for this tutorial so yeah it's not like unity where we use c sharp i'm pretty sure you can use c sharp with godot if you want to but i've been using gd script so that's what we're going to be using for this tutorial and uh yeah it is pretty decent to use in my opinion i do like gd script and so uh yeah so what we're going to do is uh, as you can see here for the file path it wants to save it into the scenes folder but we don't want that because you know this isn't going to be a scene it's going to be a script so what we're going to do is we're going to click on this little folder icon here and then we're going to uh, click on this arrow up at the top left here so then we can go to the parent folder and then you want to go create folder and we're going to call this scripts okay and then we're going to save our script into this folder and then yeah and then you want to go create and then boom we have created the script and it has opened up for us automatically Alrighty, so once you open up your script, or once your script is automatically opened, I should say, since, you know, the script automatically opens up, and let me just say this right now, I do really like how Godot has its own built-in uh, script editor, because with Unity you have to use Visual Studio, which, you um, you know, if you accidentally close your Visual Studio uh, window uh, constantly, you know, you'll then need to, you know, take a couple seconds or so to open it back up but then meanwhile with this it's pretty much instant with opening scripts since it's within the editor so I do really like that but so anyways with uh, this what you want to do is you just want to get rid of the starter stuff just like how you would with a unity script and then we're going to be entering in the following function so we're going to be entering func so what func means is it's sort of like voids in C sharp but it's just worded differently so instead of using void like how you would in unity C sharp we're going to be using func which is short for function and then we're going to be going underscore value underscore changed and then new value new underscore value there so once you enter that in you then want to do the two dots and then you just want to press enter and then boom and now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, setting basically the master volume of the game. So we're going to be going audio server dot, oops, sorry, I accidentally um, forgot the R there. So we're going to go audio server dot set underscore volume, oh wait, no, sorry, uh, set underscore bus underscore volume underscore DB. And then we're going to be doing parentheses audio server dot get underscore bus underscore index and then we're going to be doing parentheses again master because we're going to be changing the master volume the overall volume of the game and then we're going to be doing a comma after that and then we're going to be doing new value because it's going to be getting the value of the slider and it's going to be applying it to the master volume of the game 
So yeah, so essentially, um, oh wait, apparently there is, oh wait, uh, sorry guys, I've got the R here again, there we go, audio, so, audio server dot get bus index, blah blah blah, yep. So basically, um, just to summarize this script, it's, you know, pretty easy. So our function here, so we have function value changed, and then it gets a new value, and then we change the uh, master volume, and then uh, the master volume then has the value of the volume slider applied to it. So then the master volume equals to the, yeah, you, you guys get it. So yeah. And uh, that's pretty much that done. So now what we're going to be doing is we're going to be uh, creating a new scene. So let's create a new scene. And the reason as to why I'm doing this is because when you're making an actual game in Godot, right? Uh, you might have a lot of things in different scenes, so you might have your UI in a different scene, and you, then you might have your levels all in different scenes, and certain other things in different scenes, right? So that's why I'm doing this. So anyways, we're going to be creating a new 3D scene, and uh, I'm just going to call this node here, I'm just going to rename this to level. This is going to be like our main scene. And then all I'm going to put in this scene is I'm going to add a child node, and I'm going to add a camera to it, that's all I'm, all I'm going to be adding. And, uh, oh yeah, and also, um, another thing you'll want to add as well in your scene is you want to, so on your main node, you want to right click, go add child node, and then you'll want to add an audio stream player. So what this is, is it's basically, um, you know, audio that plays, uh, you know, like, it's basically like an audio source in Unity where you add your sound to it and then it plays the audio. That's basically what the audio stream player is. So we're going to be adding that in, and then where it says stream, you then want to add in your audio. So here I have my audio here in the uh, file system, we're going to add this into here, and then boom. And yes, as you can see here, we have the uh, volume, which can be set on this as well. And uh, so it turns out that the max volume you can actually set on the audio is uh, 24, so uh, yeah, that's just a bit of information there if you're planning on setting your uh, volume slider to anything higher than 24 for the max value. I'm pretty sure uh, 24 would be like the max value of what you would set your like master volume to and then for the minimum um, Then for the minimum value I was right it is negative 80 so yeah So that's why I have it set to negative 80 on my audio slider. And so, uh, yeah, so with this, I'm just gonna, you know, you, you guys can set your individual audio streams to whatever, um, like, volume you want to. And then uh, once you have that in, once you have your audio stream player in, now what you want to do is in your scenes folder, you then want to drag your UI over into your main scene. So we're going to be making this a child node of the uh, main level node. And then, boom, now we actually have our UI in the scene. Alrighty, so what I'm going to be doing now is I'm actually going to be saving this main level and we're going to be saving it into the scenes folder, just call it level and save and boom. So now what we're going to do is we're going to test this out and see if it works. So how we're going to do that is we're going to click on the play button in the top right, go run project. And then so uh, when you're first launching, uh, when you're first like testing out your game right in debug mode, uh, you'll need to select the main scene, so uh, the current scene that I am in is the scene which is going to be my main scene, so I'll select current, but if that's not the case for you guys, then just choose select, then I think what it does is it then, you know, makes you actually, like, select a uh, one of your scenes to be the main scene, whatever you want it to be, so yeah. So anyways, I'm going to be selecting the current scene as my main scene, and uh, yeah, so here we are now, there is no audio playing and I think I know why. So on your audio stream player, in order to make, in order to make audio play on its own, uh, what you want to do is there's actually this uh, variable here called audio auto play. And as you can see here, it says if true audio plays when added to scene tree. So that basically means as soon as the scene starts, then the audio will play. So that's what I'm going to be doing. We're going to be turning that on. And uh, yeah, and then we're going to be saving the scene again, and now let's play. And so as you can see, when I mess around with the audio slider, it goes up and down. 
And uh, yeah, so that there is how you make a master volume slider in Godot. So if you guys enjoyed this simple tutorial and would like more, be sure to let me know uh, down in the comments below and like this video as well. I'm just pausing as I speak so then I can, you know, show you guys the uh, audio going up and down. Alright, so I'm pretty sure that's that um, music done now. I think that's the end of the music. So yeah, so anyways guys, that's the end of this tutorial. If you did enjoy this little Godot tutorial, well not really little, it is longer than 10 minutes I'm pretty sure, but um, yeah, if you did enjoy this tutorial, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more Godot tutorials like this. Do you want some more, uh, you know, uh, advanced stuff um, in the future? You know, I only just started using Godot not too long ago, so once I do get a lot better with it, I will be uh, you know, making more advanced tutorials and stuff like that. I thought I'd start off with something very simple here just to get started. Um, you know, I do have a bunch more tutorial ideas in mind for Godot. Uh, again, I just thought I'd start off with something simple here today. If you guys actually want to um, check out a project that I made recently in Godot uh, called Mushi's Kitchen Cheese Rampage, you can. It's for free and uh, you can download it on Itch.io right now. It is a horror game. It does look all cutesy and stuff on the surface, but it is a horror game underneath, so yeah, uh, don't let the appearance of it fool you. And uh, yeah, it was my first released Godot game, and I do like it for what it is. I just thought I'd do something simple, and I am also working on, a, on another Godot project at the moment, which I think you guys will like. It is another Mushi's Kitchen related project, and it's not just, you know, very basic looking like that is. It is going to have more of like a realistic art style, so uh, yeah. Anyways guys, I'll see you all soon in my next video. Again, if you did enjoy this, this Godot tutorial and would like more, be sure to let me know down in the comments below, and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.